oh, it's just so special. And it means so much, especially because this film was made, you know, entirely independently. And so to have it received in this light is incredible. Laura Chekaway certainly won't be the most famous director in the room at the 2018 Academy Awards ceremony, but that's exactly what makes it so special. Her second film, Edith Plus Eddie, is one of five contenders for Best Short Subject Documentary. She not only directed, produced and edited the film, but she also independently financed it with her fellow producers. The film follows the lives of Edith and Eddie. When they got married in 2014, they were in their mid-90s and were America's oldest interracial newlyweds. But a family feud threatens to tear them apart. Was it a challenge to embed yourself in Eddie's and Eddie's life, considering that they were quite old? They opened up right away and they were so happy to be together and to have found love at this time in their life that they were just really generous and um, shared their story. What would you say the documentary touches on? What are the major themes? The legal guardianship system, um, which I wasn't aware of before making this film, that's a system that is in great need of reform. What happens with Edith and Eddie is happening to elders all over the country, and most people don't know about it unless it happens within their own family. The objective is to separate Mom and Eddie and me and put them into an institutional situation. If an elderly person hasn't arranged for a relative to take care of them should their cognitive abilities worsen, the state will appoint a guardian to take over their legal and financial decision. This is also the case for elders whose family guardians are in disagreement, as in Edith's story. Dad, that's a nice thing. Well, You know, it brings up elder rights, dignity, honor, and I think that, um, you know, we live in a culture that often disregards some of the most vulnerable among us. There's a certain reverence or honor for elders that has been lost. People that have seen the film um, told us that this inspired them to go home and talk with their own families and loved ones. Although some would agree that court-appointed guardians can serve an important role in our society, critics of the system say there aren't enough safeguards against abuse. The National Association to Stop Guardian Abuse advocates for guardianship law reform. The group argues over the years that law has been misapplied, misused and sometimes manipulated. The group also warned about the dangers associated with giving strangers total and absolute control of life, liberty and property of their wards. One of the most powerful scenes in the documentary, when Edith is being chased from her own house. Such, such a traumatic scene. What I'm wondering is, what was your state of mind being there in that moment as a filmmaker? You know, as a doc filmmaker, you go on this ride and it often takes you all sorts of places and on a lot of twists and turns. You just want to stay centered on what you're there to do and the work. And at the same time, these are people that we really care about. And so our hearts were breaking. We were standing outside in the rainstorm, and Corwin, who was running the sound, said that he was still picking up the audio. And he kept saying, Eddie's amazing. Eddie's a hero. She lived here for all of her life to take care of this place and raise her children. You got a mother, haven't you? You remember this to your dad day. You will remember this until your dad day. You never know who you're going to be in any given moment until you're faced with certain experiences. And so who he was in that moment, um, it really shines through. And is it is still alive? Uh, she passed away in March. Do you think she could have ever imagined that a documentary about her own life story would be nominated for an Oscar? That's a great question. I don't know, but um, I know that her daughter, Rebecca, she just finds it so incredible. And she said that um, her mom was from a part of Virginia in the Appalachian Mountains called Tinywood. It's not even on the map. And she said from Tinywood to Hollywood, which I thought was, you know, just really sweet to hear. 
Like Check Away, iconic singer Cher was deeply moved by Edith and Eddie's story when she heard about it on the news. Edith's daughter Rebecca Wright and Rebecca's sister are Edith's co-guardians. The sister is fighting Rebecca for full custody. She wants to sell my mother's house. She got involved behind the scenes and hired an attorney to help the couple stay together. And after seeing Checkaway's documentary, she decided to join the team as an executive producer. Having somebody with that kind of star power is extra special and there's something about it of, you know, whether it's me or Cher or Edith or whomever, that we're all women and people and that just what tugs at our hearts is there's just a lot of commonalities yeah. there. I know that you're also a very successful writer and featured journalist, so I'm wondering how does being a writer help you in your documentary filmmaking? Yeah, my journalism background really, without realizing, it was great training for making docs. At the time, I was mostly writing profiles about entertainers and artists, and they would let me really deeply into their lives in a way that wasn't common. That was, you know, just the first taste of getting access into people's lives. I actually had just filmed this documentary with Kendrick Lamar, I think a few days before I went to meet Edith and Eddie for the first time. And I realized that the way that my heart was beating when I was on this bus from New York City to Virginia to meet Edith and Eddie, I just realized what a fire they had already lit in me before I even met them. It doesn't matter whether you're maybe a celebrity or someone that people don't know, that a you know, good and real story is a good and real story. I could really relate when at the end of the film it said directed, edited and produced by Laura Checkaway. I could tell that you really had ownership of it in a way that's not always common when you think of the Oscars. Yeah, and it, it, that again, it just means so much more to um, be getting ready to be in that room. Going to the whole ceremony part, what's the one thing you're the most looking forward to? Good question. <laughs> Too many things. Um, yeah, um, just being there, just, you know, being there is going to be really, really special.